backyard and, and playgrounds their whole, their whole lives, but to watch your sons one feed the other for a basket here at Chrysler. Oh, I mean, it's, a, it's a, a dream come true because that's something that never happens, um, you know, every day. You know, it's one of those moments where you have a special time in your life where you get an opportunity to coach your alma mater and then um, knowing the times when you were in the NBA or you were coaching in the NBA, uh, how much you loved you know, your alma mater and you talked about the only college that they would go to uh, would be Michigan and teaching them the fight song. And, you know, Michigan and, and Ohio State playing the, you know, the, uh, that, that uh, football rivalry game. You know, dressing up all my kids and, and my wife and my dog, you know, in the Michigan <laughs> and amazing blue. And now to see it all come, you know, like to fruition and, and, and seeing the opportunity, uh, how it's presented, you know, with uh, the growth of both boys, you know, and since watching them, like you just touched on, in the backyard, watching them in high school practice, then AU, and uh, now here on, in Ann Arbor. And, in front of our great crowd cheering them on. It, it is it really a blessing. And also to see their mom, I kind of peeked my eye over at her because I could hear her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hear her and I'm like, the excitement and the, you know, that she has on, and the smiles that she's, you know, she's having each and every possession. You know, it, it's a blessing. Over here with Jack. Yeah, so uh, you have two point guards in Jalen and Doug that have a pretty different style of play. Just how do you think that adds a layer to the offense out there? Well, they both are, you know, um, pass first point guards, um, smart, hezzy, uh, unselfish, and, and, they, and their teammates enjoy playing with them. Uh, there, there are going to be some times where you see them both play together out there on the floor, uh, but we're just still filling things out. This is our first game, but it's nice to see, you know, we have both guys that we can use in different situations that I trust is going to. Uh, lead us. Chris? I mean, you preach it, but can you just talk about the want to on defense? These guys seem like they are really buying into what you're teaching. Oh, they've always bought in, but, you know, it's, it's about, you know, continue to keep growing it. And, uh, you know, obviously accountability is a part of it. Uh, you know, there's no room for, you know, a lack of effort. Uh, I'm not saying that we, we have that. Um, there's no room for not being detailed exactly with what we practice and how we show it on film and how we talk about it and hear their voice on how to fix you know certain situations out there on the floor. And I know like while the game is happening, you know things happen moving so fast and it's totally different from when you're playing against the scout team. Uh, but you know at times I get a little out of out of whack too when we don't do what we work on what we uh, what we ask. But overall, I love that uh, there was effort. And um, a team that shoots very well from the three-point land, and um, to, for them to only shoot 23% from the from three, and 29% uh, from the field, and scoring is one of their 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 strengths. And they said it, you know, this upcoming season, that's one of the things that they are going to, you know, continue to keep growing on is attacking the paint and you know, scoring within seven seconds in the shot clock. And then, so they obviously said they want to play with pace. And they also talked about how they, you know, three-point shooting is going to be their strength. And, you know, it was good to know that we worked on that for those last two days. And our guys were able to apply it. Right in front with David. Hey, Juwan. Um, so in his press <coughs> Hunter mentioned that they're still feeling each other out. Um, from your perspective as head coach, where do you see them gelling? Where do you think they have a little bit to go? Well, you're not where you want to be, you know, in, so early in the season, you know, this is only our first game, um, and there is room for growth. And we're going to continue to keep getting better. And, um, there's areas that we're going to try to clean up. And but I love where our mindset is, and you know, our guys are really dialed in and in tune to um, you know being a elite level group. And I love how they were so connected. Uh, I just hope that continues throughout the years. The first first game and. I'm sure we're going to have a, hit a rough, rough patch. Pretty much the um, vast majority of the college basketball teams do. Uh, but it's how we're going to react when we have those uncomfortable moments. John? When uh, a, a guy like Kobe doesn't have the long range success that, that you know he can, what's, what's your approach in, uh, in working with him? 
everyone, everyone's gonna do fine. You know, it's, you know, it's first game. <laughs> Please stop, stop that. <laughs> Young man, gonna be great this year, and we don't need him. He knows it. So, so but you don't have to. I have no worry in, in, in any of our guys. Okay. Yep. Andrew. Don't single one person out, please don't. <laughs> don't do that. With uh, with so many new players, uh, I guess, can you speak to the process of, of figuring out lineups and, and just how guys there you go. There maximize you go. each other's strengths? Is it is it fun? Is it yeah. challenging? Th that's the part right there that you just mentioned. You know, there are going to be so many different lineups or there may be uh, so many different um, guys that may play one game, some may not play one game, because we, we have a deep team. And, uh, you know, but we also have a team that's still growing. Uh, and we are young. And um, there are going to be some moments where, you know, you see one guy might not play um, one game. He may play the next game. But I'm still filling the group out. And, uh, you know, we're not there where we want to be yet. You know, we have a long season. <laughs> Just the first game. Come here. There was in the first half, there was a sequence where it looked like Hunter passed the ball, but Joe Aidy missed it, goes out of bounds, and there's a media timeout. After that timeout, 18 0 run. Was that like, was Joey's veteran experience there, kind of playing a dude, kind of playing to that, his poise, or was there something we didn't see? Trust. Trust. We got some good defensive stops, and then we went down on the other end, and we just made some really good plays. And, uh, and the reason why I say trust is because there were some unselfish plays that happened. And, when you have a group that continuously keep feeding life into one another on the court, and then you have a group that sit on a bench waiting to get in, and they are being so positive and encouraging, uh, you have you know, runs like that. And hopefully, we'll we'll continue to keep growing. Austin, just follow up on the question about lineups and rotations. How close are some of those guys like Yusuf and uh, Will and Isaiah to kind of breaking into that top eight, nine, ten rotation? Yes, we're gonna need everyone. And it's going to be a long year, so stay ready. Stay ready. You don't have to get ready. Steve? Juwan, we talked to Hunter about Joey Baker, and he, he touched on what an obvious floor stretcher he is. Talk about that aspect coming from a, a bigger player. Well, Joey, you know, we all know it's documented that he's played at Duke, and, you know, one of the best conferences in college basketball, the ACC, and played for Hall of Fame coach. So he's been coached, and you know, the kid knows how to play. Um, one of his strengths is shooting, and I, I don't want him to pass up any open shots. Let it fly. Make or miss, we live with the results. we got time for a couple more. Tom? Yeah, Juwan, uh, I think in the first half you were trailing in rebounding. You flipped the script a little bit and had a sick rebound advantage. Uh, can you talk about your emphasis on rebounding, maybe what you said at halftime, and season long, what's your message on rebounding? Uh, I emphasized that during halftime. And um, at halftime, we gave up six offensive rebounds in, in the first half. And uh, looking at the sheet here, total 15. Um, we will get better in that area. And, you know, over the years, we've always been a re really good rebound. Is it, is it a 50 50 ball or a box out issue? Uh, you know, it's, it's more of, you know, effort and also, you know, putting the body on someone. But the first game, we'll get better with it. I'm not panicking. If, you know, you'll take 21 from Jed any night, but five assists led the team. What impresses you the most about him as a distributor of the basketball? He, he knows, you know, he's been around the game for, for a long time. And um, he also has a high IQ. He's a willing passer. He has great size. He sees the floor. You know, I've seen that from day, day one when he first started playing basketball. And, you know, it's the ball is going to be in his hands. And at times, he's going to make some good plays. And there going to be some times, just like any freshman, he's going to make some mistakes. It might be a turnover because he's trying to make, you know, some, some plays that probably he may saw that the guy open and then the defense sort of collapsed quickly because on his college level, you know, you get some older guys that are bigger and faster and, and they, they active. They also scout you on film like how we scout them. Uh, so he'll he'll learn and grow and um, I I know he will because he has no. He loves the game. I feel like that. <laughs> I want this kid to enjoy his college life, man. I don't want to make it emphasize that you know, dad's going to be so hard on him because I'm not. But I'm also a coach. 
and you can see that in the first half when uh, there were two or three different defensive mistakes, and you know um, had to sit him down, let him calm down, and figure out you know where the areas that he probably thought he didn't um, mess up on, but we gave him clarity that he did, and uh, it was great to see that he responded and came back in and uh, played played well because he could have did the opposite and been sulky, but he. That's not how he's wired. Coach, we appreciate your time. Thank you.